Hello everyone, so today I am here to do my double book review of Dark Fever and Blood Fever by Karen Marie Monning. I didn't know whether I wanted to do this book review or not, which is why I'm doing a double re book review of both of them, because I didn't want to put out one for the first one and have like things from the second one accidentally be said or anything. So this book review is going to be for the both of the two books. So I give both of these books 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really, really have been enjoying this series. It is super entertaining, super fast paced and action filled and the characters are kick ass and I have loved them so, so much. So I'm going to start with a non-spoilery section, mostly describing the details of this first book, Dark Fever. So we start off meeting a young woman named Mac who lives in the South. She is a Southern Belle and she hears that her sister Alina has been murdered while abroad in Dublin. While her parents are grieving, she decides that she needs to go off to Ireland to tell the police that they need to keep searching for her killer because the police have basically given up on Alina's case. When she goes to Dublin, she discovers an entirely new world of the Fae, which consists of the Seely and the Unseely, which are the dark and the light fairies kind of thing. While she's there, she meets Jericho Barons, who is a very mysterious man, and he kind of takes her under his wing, but also is sort of using her. We also meet a character named Lane, who is a fae, who seems to be very interested in our main character, Mac. I really enjoyed the whole fae aspect of these books, simply because I haven't read that many books with fae in them, except for like The Moral Instruments Slightly and Throne of Glass, and I just really enjoyed how Karen Marie Monning displayed them. I thought it was really interesting and very, very unique. One of my biggest things I liked about these books was that they were extremely unique. They were like nothing I'd ever really read before and they were just entertaining. Some people might argue that a 4.5 stars for both of these books might be a little bit high, but I personally judge my reviews completely on how much I enjoyed the book and I really loved these books. They have been all I've been thinking about for so long. I realize a lot of other people on booktube have been reading these recently so that is mostly what pushed me to do book reviews of them because they're turning into one of my favorite series so I kind of want these videos to look back on later. For my last part of this spoilery section, in case my description of this book has not gotten you to go out and want to buy it and read it immediately, I am going to appeal to all my YA readers because this is an adult book and I very much agree with the people who describe this as the adult moral instruments. It has the exact same vibe to me as those books did to me as a younger reader. It also has the similarity of a girl who can see a world that not all other humans can see and everything sort of going for it. Um, and also for me, just personally, the reading experience and the vibe from these books were very similar, but that's basically where the comparisons stop. But if you really enjoy the moral instruments, I say pick these up. They are amazing. Really, really great adult books. Also, this was exactly what I was looking for in an adult novel because most adult novels to me can be very slow, very boring, not very relatable to someone who is, you know, 18, 19, who isn't really in the YA genre anymore but isn't really adult, and I found the main character Mac, who is about 22 I believe, very very realistic and very relatable for people who are my age but also probably a bit older than her, so that is why I just thought this book was perfect kind of introduction into adult again because I had read any adult for a little bit and I thought this was a great kind of introduction into it again. Alright, so for everyone who has not read these books and does not want to hear some spoilers, please leave now. Alright, so I'm going to start with this first book, which is Dark Fever. Um, I obviously really, really enjoyed this book. It was a 4.5 out of 5 stars for me. One of the biggest parts of this book that I really, really enjoyed was the character of Mac and her relationship with Barons. I, Mac was such a great character to me because I am a huge fan of girls who are just like really awesome girls. She was super pretty and pink and blonde for most of the book and she owned it. I love that she kind of realized like yes I am really girly but that does not make me any less of a person 
And I really enjoyed that because most books that have really kick-ass female characters, they're really tomboyish and like more like a male character than a female character. So it was great having her as this super, super feminine girl who was still super powerful and super kick-ass. I also really liked her character development in this book as well as just her reaction to this whole thing happening to her. Because while I've seen some people say it was really selfish of her to have gone off to Dublin while her parents were kind of grieving, it also wouldn't have helped anyone if she had stayed behind. I personally know that if I was in the same situation, I probably would have done what she had done and kind of gone to like, you know, figure out what really happened to my sister and my brother's death and like, get to the bottom of things because it doesn't help anyone who's grieving to not have answers to what actually happened. And also, of course, there is the character of Jericho Barons, who I love. He is powerful, cool, sexy, and awesome. Like, best qualities in a character ever. Uh, he's also really, really mysterious. I still have so many questions about him in the second book, and they're just not getting answered. And every time I think I figured him out, I really haven't. I also just love their relationship. The slow burning romance that begins in this first novel, it was great. It was great. Now as for the actual plot of this one, uh, between the first two books I thought it was probably slower than the second book because mostly it is just about um, Mac learning about the Fey realm and like figuring out who she is and stuff which I very much enjoyed but then we got to a section in the middle where she was just basically getting brought around by barons uh, to find OOPs or whatever they're actually called, I can't actually remember what they're actually called, the Fey kind of things. Um, basically it was just him using her to find a bunch of those for a while there, which got a little bit boring, but not like super boring. But then the ending with the whole like discovering Alina's uh, murderer, or who we think might be her murderer, who knows, um, but the boyfriend and the everything and the unsealy and all of that, it was just really really exciting, really kick-ass. Where did Jericho Barons come from? Who knows? He's a magical little being, isn't he? But those are my main thoughts on the first book. I really really loved it. It was a great introduction to a high or urban fantasy, I believe, um, adult series. And, I'm, and obviously it made me want to immediately pick up the second one. This second one I found a lot more entertaining. It, the first one was extremely entertaining, but this one was a little bit faster paced just simply because we had basically our world figured out. We had basically like what was happening happening um, and basically we got world development a little bit, but we also got character development and also just a lot of plot development. Lots of development happen happening in this one a lot faster than it happened in the first one. So this one starts at the a couple weeks or a week or a couple days after the end of the first one, which ends with her sensing the sensa she saw do something like I can't pronounce it. I pronounce it in my head as sen sensar do, um, which I know is wrong. But it starts right after that when she passes out and everything, and it just starts kind of with her life. I really enjoyed the whole aspect of her discovering the society of she seers and that whole kind of aspect was really cool to me especially because she didn't just run off to them because I feel like in a lot of fantasy novels they find like you know their people they find a group of people that are similar to them and they just drop everything and go for them but she stayed true to barons which was exciting I also liked in this one how it got a bit darker. I enjoyed how after Mac went off with Vlaine and that whole like six hour, actually a month thing happened, um, like the Unseely had basically taken over and that was just awesome. I thought that was really, really cool and the ending was great. The ending of this book was really, really great. I really, really enjoyed the whole Maluse, that's how I pronounce his name, don't know how it's actually pronounced, um, Maluse with the whole vampire thing and the eating, the unsealy, and the whole just, that made it just so dark. I found that really cool. I really, really, really hope the whole kind of him breaking Mac a little bit, like we didn't really see what happened, but she said he kind of broke her, kind of. Um, and also she obviously ate some unsealy and I'm just, I really hope that kind of comes back to haunt her because if that just happened and it's kind of forgotten about, I think it'll be kind of bad, but I just, I really hope that comes back. And of course that awesome fight thing 
happening between Jericho and Mac in the cell and the making out and the, all of the stuff happening was just wow. I love their slow burning romance so much but if they don't end up together by the end of the last book I'll be upset because all of this cannot be happening without them getting together in the end or I'll be upset, okay? Just and of course this book also ends with her seeing the sense her do um, for the first time without passing out and that she believes is because she has changed because she ate some of the unsealy which has made her quote evil. Um, I thought that the whole kind of plot twist that we find out about with the sense I do, I can't remember if it's actually in this one or if it's in the prologue of the third one. Um, God, I actually don't know. Uh, the Sensar Du is actually like a beast of itself, has kind of created itself into this beast, and it's like taking over people, and it's like, go. that's how, that's why it keeps going around Dublin and everything, and she can't get an exact reading on where it is, because it is moving itself around, and I just thought that was really, really fun. And... This second book was just so good, it's so much darker, and I just, I am loving where this series is going. So yeah, that is my review on both Dark Fever and Blood Fever. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, it was just sort of a rambly getting my thoughts out on these first two books. It's probably not going to be an, as coherent as my next reviews of the next couple of books, because I did not like write down most of my feelings while I was reading these books, because I wasn't planning on doing reviews for them, but now that I know I'm going to, I will definitely try to make them better for the next three books. Um, but yes, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. I love you all, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye! This is so awkward! <laughs> Get out, put some earbuds in or something. <laughs> Caught me in the line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait until you put your earbuds in. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Okay. <laughs> oh, the phone. The phone rings every single time I film without fail. Every time. Why did you get up? I was gonna like put it away. I thought it might still be. Yes, Anna? Oh, there's one turn the page. <laughs> you can turn the page. Okay. I don't remember where I was anymore. I'm taking a screenshot. Stop laughing at me! <laughs> I'm gonna show you. This is who was sitting behind me the whole time making faces at me.